Starting off as is traditional with the pouring of the beer, tonight it is Starbeast Espresso Imperial Stout from Sucrums Brewing in Winnipeg. Espresso Starbeast is a full-bodied imperial stout with the addition of little sister coffee maker's Colombian El Meridino. I think I got that right. This beer has hints of dark chocolate espresso and a resinous hop bite. So tonight, I'm taking a closer look at these little video lights that I got. They're newer brand. Uh, newer makes sort of budget-oriented photography and audio gear. And so far, anytime I've seen it, it's surprisingly good for the, for the cost of it compared to... I mean, it's not high-end stuff, but it's also not priced like high-end stuff. It's priced more reasonable for people like me and you, just, you know, YouTubers clowning around in their basement. Uh, the kit came with three lights, but I've got two of them up here mounted already, and I've been using them for a few weeks now. And let me just turn them on, and you can see the difference that they make. Notice they just take the shadows right out of that front there. And actually, I should have turned the auto exposure off on my camera because it adjusted for it a little bit. Hang on. Let's try that experiment again. There, I've got the two lights off and I've got my exposure locked on my camera. Now we'll crank it up and you can see the difference that they actually make without the camera automatically adjusting for it. That's pretty impressive in sort of killing shadows in front of it. Yeah, okay, it creates that extra shadow back there, but that's not a big deal. Nobody's looking back there anyway until I pointed at it. And just for reference, there's where I've got them mounted. They're hanging just out of shot. And yes, that is a selfie stick handle, zip tied to a spring clamp, clamped on just above my uh, workbench. So the three of them came with a set of accessories. Uh, each one came with one of these little ball heads, little swivel ball heads. So it's just got a quarter 20 on the bottom, quarter 20 on the top, and a little adjustable ball head so you can put it wherever you want. They also each came with a charging cable and a suction cup with a little swivel mount on it as well, which makes them really handy. They're, they're actually intended for, you know, sticking onto your laptop for video conferencing or stuff like that, but realistically you can stick them onto any smooth surface. I don't know whether that counts as a smooth surface or not. Not really. My bench has been hacked up pretty severely. Let me see if I can find a smooth surface around here. There, how about the screen of that multimeter? And then you can just mount whatever you want. I mean, realistically, any glass surface or anything like that is going to work. I don't just don't have anything around here other than that. Anyway, so that's what was in the kit. Basically, that times three. Each light comes with a cold shoe mount on the bottom, which is intended to mount onto the top of the camera or something like that. It's also got a quarter 20 thread on the bottom. It's also got three female, I guess you'd call them, uh, cold shoe uh, mounts on the side, which you could use to mount another light or any other cold shoe accessory, like a microphone holder or something like that. And then the little locking ring locks it down in place and it doesn't go anywhere. But I'm not going to do that, and I think I will put this guy back up on his mount so that it can help light the way here. And we'll focus on that singular one there. So on the back of them, they've just got a uh, potentiometer for brightness adjustment. All the way from very little, which is that. Thank you, auto exposure on the camera. All the way up to much brighter. And on the back, they have the USB-C charging port and a four LED battery status indicator. According to the little manual that comes with them, they are 5,600 Kelvin, plus or minus 20, so not perfectly calibrated, but fairly close. 60 degree wide uh, light beam. They're good between three and six meters away. Maybe as a fill light, but for what I'm using them for, the closer the better. Uh, they have a 2100 milliamp hour battery inside them, or so it claims, at 3.7 volts. So obviously lithium ion. In my experience charging them, they came out between 2020 milliamp hours and 2290 milliamp hours. So that 2000 that they're claiming, or 2100 they're claiming in the book, is close enough to honest. That's reasonable. This is hard to show 
but it is a seven by seven grid of LEDs in there. So if my high school math doesn't fail me, that's 49 LEDs in the panel. And I guess there's not much else to see on the outside of them. It's held together by there, five screws. There's one each down there and two down there. So I think that's probably the next thing that we should do. Unfortunately, I can't use the fancy screwdriver down these little holes. So I don't even know where this one came from. It came with some other product, but it's the skinniest tiny screwdriver that I've got. So it will have to do. Now then, it just comes apart there. So it looks like the, fa okay, the face bezel comes off. And the diffuser comes off. And there is the array of LEDs and the reflector. Just a little bit. Pull that reflector off. There is, oh, it even says 49 LED panel. How nice of it. And it looks like we've got some more screws holding the panel in place. I probably also want to spudger off the potentiometer cap, I think. Unless there's a screw underneath it. Feels like there is a screw underneath that little power sticker. Let's destroy that completely getting it off. Yep, there's a screw on that potentiometer. Okay. Good thing I didn't get too carried away on the spudger activity. So yeah, just a cheap little potentiometer in there. Pull these screws off the panel. Oh, and there's more screws back there on the circuit board. Okay. This thing is put together very solidly. I approve. So then that gets the panel out of the way. Very nice little aluminum core board. Is it aluminum core? No, it isn't. It's just a board. Okay. Just all the LEDs in parallel by the looks of it. And there is the cell. Now it looks like it's got a protection circuit on the end of it, which is nice. Two pieces of foam. And then the control board. And two or three screws, four screws holding that in. Wow. They really did a number on this thing. It's got all kinds of screws holding it together. And because there's still power on that board, and there's no way of disconnecting it, I am going to use my ceramic uh, tweezers to remove those screws so I don't short anything out. <laughs> and there we go. That's it out. So on the circuit board, we can see that there are the four little LEDs for state of charge. And actually, if I turn it on... See that they light up nice and blue, three out of four. Those LEDs over there all light up nice on the panel as expected. So I haven't broken it yet. The only other thing on this side of the board is that USB C. So we're just getting closer to the board here. There's basically three chips on it there is an inductor, there is a diode there, which is a three amp shot key diode. Um, this chip down here has no markings on it at all. So I'm going to assume it's a microcontroller that's in charge of everything. This up here is a TC4055, which is a USB power controller and lithium ion linear charger. Not really a surprise considering that it's, uh, sitting physically right between the USB and the battery. And then this guy over here, any guesses? Well, the part number you probably didn't guess. That's an FP7102, which is a 3.6 to 28 volt, 2 amp constant current regulator for white LED, according to the data sheet. And this Schottky diode here and this inductor are all part of its circuit. And then there's a few smaller capacitors and a few resistors just to set the current limit and whatnot. No real surprises on here. Um, everything is exactly what you would expect, and it's a fairly well laid out board from what I can tell. 
Well, the potentiometer is a little bit uh, of a basic component, but that's all you need to do the job. Everything else seems like exactly what you would hope for in a product like this. I'm especially impressed at the number of screws that's holding this guy together. And that's a fairly solid plastic molding. Lots of detail in there. And these, I mean, I got them at a screaming clearance deal, which is what uh, I think they cost me five bucks each, which is not what you're likely to find them for right now. Again, they're clear, they were a clearance deal when I bought them, but there are still a handful of them kicking around. And Neewer now has other very similar looking lights in their catalog. If you want, I'll put a link to a search on eBay for these things down in the description. Uh, also somewhere, probably now, I'll put a link to the mailbag where these showed up and uh, it's got some other information and whatnot from the seller's website. I like these and I think I'm going to put this guy back together now and... I don't need to do that on video because you saw me take it apart. And there we go. It's back together again. And it even still works. That is pretty cool. Oh, when something still works after I've uh, taken it apart. Anyway, those are pretty cool little lights and I'm glad I grabbed them. Um... As I said, there's links down below if you care to uh, see if you can find one. They are they are a discontinued product, but uh, if this is any indication of the quality that newer builds their stuff, I am really impressed. Like I said, they are not trying to take away the professional lighting market. This this is aimed squarely at. Uh, at us, uh, you know, home gamers, basically, uh, hobbyists, whatever you want to call us. And at the price point that they sell these at, I'm happy to say that it's a decent thing. Um, now I bought these with my own money. As you, as I've mentioned before, this is not sponsored. Newer doesn't know who the hell I am. They're not endorsing this or anything, but so far, I, from, from the various products of theirs that I've seen so far, I am impressed. Anyways, uh, what do you think? Uh, comments and questions down below as usual. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.